It's the Brothers in Brown Liquor Podcast. And now, here's your host, Mr. Gary D. Wright. I mean, the liquor is working. Well, the brown liquor is working here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Brothers in Brown Liquor. While we drink it and fake it, I'm sitting here with my co host. Please uh, welcome to the table the one and only Mr. Show, Burke Cordelia. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, comedian Burke Cordelia, aka Mr. Show, live and direct here with Brothers and Brown Liquor. As you can see, there's plenty of us at the table. And yes, we are brothers and we got the brown liquor. I'm going to pass it off to my boy, DJ TMW. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am the DJ TMW. See, I can yeah. talk right now. Yeah. 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 I'm the only one here without a microphone. So all y'all kiss my ass. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, but well, we was both cursed. Anyway, all y'all kiss my ass. That's so what I'm down. saying is, yes, that's two, two guys. That's two persons. Two persons. Two I'm, I'm doubling down, guys, dog. Uh, see, I, I didn't do it that time. Right. Anyway, uh, DJ TMW, talented Mr. Wilson. Appreciate everybody that's going to view and see this and Come back for the next show because we definitely gonna do this again. The look is really talking right now. So, sure. and on to my partner, the one and only DJ Rob. What's going on, DJ Rob? Rob DJ. Big shout out to everybody that's in uh, in the land in the world. We we yeah, we trying to do some things. Uh, I'm not drinking, not tonight. Uh, I gotta go see the doctor. You gotta take a piss we, test. Anymore. I do, I do. I'm just keeping real with y'all. I gotta, I gotta go. You know, take a piss test. Get get life insurance. Okay? <laughs> All right, go get that shit. Too many ass time, black men, you know, I, we can laugh and joke about all we want, but that'll be my first little soapbox for the evening. Go 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 Don't pee in a cup. Not. Go go pee in a cup. Let them tell you about yourself and then figure out how to be out here much longer than uh those that have gone before us. Rest okay. in peace, Chris Priestley. We see us uh rest in peace. Wow. Yeah. So what's hey, listen, uh you know what? I, not now that you said it's interesting what they can tell about peeing in the cup. Ain't that something before yeah. you just knew that the pee stunk? Now you know that oh this motherfucker got diabetes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, I digress. With that being said, uh, we we're going to go see what everybody is sipping and drinking and thinking. What's in your cup, Bert? Uh, I'm drinking this transgender panda drink. Uh, <laughs> <I don't... laughs> hey, hey, it's cognac, yet, goddamn it! Let me tell you, this goddamn panda coming and going, but it's this good. <laughs> <laughs> this panda got up and down syndrome. I, man, look, it's uh mucal vs yeah. cognac. Yeah. All you gotta do for a black man is just put vs and cognac, and we gonna try it. So yeah. I'm, man, I'm lit. I'm, I'm lit. I was go- it was either this or this peyote bottle, and I'm kind of scared of this peyote bottle. So. <laughs> And you say Columbia home of the BBLs? No sir. Don't do it. Don't do it, sir. No do sir. No, no, no. Yeah, but I got this panda. That's what I'm drinking, panda. panda so what you panda. what you drink, at TMW? Uh, initially, I have already finished my drink, so I have had me a sip of uh, tequila earlier. Uh, later, I'm probably going to break into this here Bacardi Select along with a little bit of that cone jack. Oh, sounds good, sounds good. And you know, he's not drinking. I'm drinking some new cow. You have never had this before. It is uh, a cognac made from the French berry. Uh, you know, cognac just is just the, the actual city that the berry grows in, y'all. I don't know why we're getting so caught up over the name. Brandy, cognac, it's all the same thing. It's brown mm-hmm. liquor. Just drink and enjoy it responsibly. No, um, look, I got smart water and it's electrolyte to this. <laughs> and it tastes like smart. I got great value. Me and Walmart, me and Walmart do deals all the time. Okay? Yeah, nah, shout out, yeah. you know, we look for a sponsor all the time. Hey, I'm just saying. Hey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, if, if yeah, you I'm need to know the difference, Smart Water. Smart Water went to college, four year university, yeah, graduated from Spelman. Mm-hmm. Uh, great cool value, value, graduated from Wynton Rogers. That's the pregnancy <laughs> school. <laughs> Immediately went to work thereafter. Yeah, it got a, it got pregnant during work release wow. and, and junior high, and you know it just wow. <laughs> it, it spiraled. From it spiraled point. from that point on, but it's good water when you need it. Goddamn it! Well, let's see what's going on in the world, y'all. We're gonna check take a round look around. You know, this is an opportunity to drink and think and just talk about things that we've been watching go on in the world. Uh, we we have the 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 most loved and the most hated. Uh, we are the greatest treasure that our race can provide. We are brothers and we having a drink and we thinking about what comes next 
So what you got going on, bro? What's what's on, what's in your cup, man? You know, I'm 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 drinking this mule cow again. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm I know why they call it mule cow because I'm mewing and I'm seeing stripes. So it might be a little cow in this drink after all. <laughs> but no, you know what's caught my attention lately? What's that? Have y'all heard what happened between Marvin Gaye's estate and Ed Sheeran? Mm-mm. Okay, Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Red hat, yeah, dude look like Donald Trump would come over for yeah. like, yeah, okay. It's his hat, though. It's his hat, yeah, it's his hat, yeah, 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 yeah. but he's still, for some reason, he's a young cat, he's still coming over. Yeah, right? I know, sir. Okay, so there's this song called uh, Think It Out Loud. And darling, I will be loving you yeah. till you're 70. Mm-hmm. Have you ever listened to that Somebody song? Somebody get this man a damn contract. That's what you're saying. But it used to be for... I like the song now. It's a good song. And you're kind of baby off of your feet. Huh. Come on now. Right, we're on this. We don't yeah, we're on this. Yeah, we're on this. Yeah, but listen. They might cut out a few seconds. That little orange bastard, he, he sung on that song. He did. He did. He did. He sung but listen to the undertones of that song and tell me that's not Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. Ooh. Listen to, matter of fact, just let the let it let the bass drop when it first comes in. Listen to that first drop and listen at the bass line of that song and tell me that's not let's get it on. And I know you queue it up. So basically, what's going on is that Ed Sheeran is being sued by the Marvin Gaye estate, and here's the, the parameters around it. Okay. Ed Sheeran has paid Marvin Gaye's family royalty. Okay. But the oh, co-writers, oh, they get a percentage. I don't know how much. Yeah, still a good but percentage. he's paid, yeah, he's paid them royalties. Um, the writers of the song and the producer said, oh, no. Uh-oh. Where's my money? Now, if you remember, like, five years back. When your legs don't work. You hear that? I heard it. See? See? Ooh. See? Yeah, I hear it. I do hear it. That's what I'm saying. That's the big debate right now. Okay. The big debate is... So is does, it's a matter of being sampled? It's a matter of being sampled. But what happened uh-huh. was Ed Sheeran made an agreement with Marvin Gaye's part of the Marvin Gaye estate. Right. But the other writers and creators well, that no. they want their money. Mm-hmm. So the other writers and creators of that song took him to court for $150 million. Ed Sheeran has generated what? How much? 150 million. Oh no, no, no! Don't get it twisted. Ed Sheeran has made so much money between licensing, between performances, between royalties. Ed Sheeran has made 150 and then some. Yeah. So the big debate is because of scale, right? Scale is eight notes. Mm-hmm. Do re mi fa sol la ti do so re mi fa lo sa. You know I'm drunk, right? Scale is eight notes, and everybody's arguing you can only pull up so much music from those eight notes. Well, if my particular set of eight notes made me money, you need to pay me for my music. Mm. Ed Sheeran walked away free, not paying nothing to those people as of yesterday because he went to court, played the guitar, and said, you see this, you see, I do this, and bling, bling, but Marvin Gaye is... Bing, bing. This is how this well, is the that's difference. The same thing. That's the same thing with Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice did, did with dun, Under dun, Pressure. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 Ed Sheeran did the same thing. He did the same because people don't realize that what happened with Vanilla Ice ultimately was correct for the sake of him not being framed for stealing that beat. Right. But everybody recognized it as Under Pressure, and that was uh, David Bowie. David Bowie and Queen. Under Pressure. That was Queen. Yes, yeah, yeah, Lord. Yep, yep, yep. yep. That little gay man though he can sing, couldn't he? Can he? <laughs> Boy, he can sing a solo. Boy, let me tell you that one now. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I just seen it last night. Billy Joe did that to our very own Betty Wright. No, I'm not playing song, with you. I'm not playing. With, I'm going to her daughter page right now. Shout out to Aisha. I'm going to her daughter and I got page. A, I right got a Betty Wright story because you know I, she got a. Uh, you know, my last name is Wright, and I got an opportunity to meet Betty when I was working for the radio station. And uh, it was so funny, she was standing in the lobby, and I kept looking at the lady, and I'm like, I said, ma'am, I feel like I know your face from somewhere. She started laughing, and she goes, uh, my name's Betty, 
Keep it I said, Betty. She said, yes, Betty Wright. I said, hey, cousin. She said, what do you mean, cousin? I said, my last name is Wright, too. She said, what's your name? Gary D. Wright. Are you a traffic man? I be listening to. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, wait a minute. You not the Betty Wright talking about, I know I like the song, but the music sound. I know you're not going to sing that song. Yes. She said, yes, I am. Yes. I like to fell out my chair. She was an awesome, real cool lady. Absolutely. She gave me a hug. I took a picture with her. And uh, every time she came through the state, she always spoke and said hi. And God bless the day. She was really a nice person. Absolutely. Listen to Billy Joel's Keeping the Faith, and then listen to the Clean Up Woman. Mm. You'll hear the exact same riff. Wow. And that was one of the that was one of the ones that she unfortunately she couldn't get because you know she got Color Me Bad. Color yeah. Me Bad hid it up under the beats and the song like you. Listen to the undertone. I want to sex you up. It's a Betty Wright song. Mm. So she had to go. She instead of going to court with them, she called their mama mm. and was like, she called the band's mamas mm. and was like, hey, y'all song, y'all son stole my music. What we gonna do about this? And they ended up cutting her check for the royalties and putting her in on the percentage afterwards. That's nice. That's what you but do. yeah, Billy Joel got Betty Wright. Like it's so many stories out there, and. It kind of makes me afraid of for black music right now. You hear that? That is a that is a wow. mayonnaise lace rendition of the clean up one. Wow. Billy Damn Joe. So talking about I, talking about sneaking yeah, stuff in. And I love Billy Joe, but I, I like Billy Joe. Oh too. yeah. Got, the white boy got some good stuff. Oh, yeah. Man. For real talk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Really, we're talking about sneaking stuff in and things getting snuck around. We're gonna check in with DJ uh Rob about what's in his cup. So here's the thing. Uh I'm a school board employee. I've been working for Broward County now for almost twenty three years. So the concern for me right now is uh they just announced today, um it's May fifth, uh that the clear book bags are being rolled out for the county. Clear book bags, meaning every student across Broward County, and Broward County, if I'm not mistaken, is the second largest county either in the state or in the country. But that being said, they're asking these kids to bring clear bags to school for the nature of different things that are going on at schools. We've had shootings, we've had threats, all kinds of stuff that's going on. So my concern, and, and I'm going to harken back to um, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Mm -hmm. Okay, that shooting occurred. Yeah. Um, Valentine's Day it was tragic. Seventeen people gone. Yep, that bastard's still alive. Okay, yeah. but if you consider, and I and I had this this conversation with a teacher earlier today, if you consider me the educator, mm -hmm. okay, everybody knows me. I walk in, hey, Mr. Roberts, how you doing? Blah blah blah, whatever. I can walk into my school right now with that book bag that I have or that Asha take case, whatever I'm going to come into the school with. Nobody's going to question me when I walk through the door. Nope, not at all. Very different from when you go through a hospital wing. Very different from when you go to jail. Very different when you walk into certain grocery stores or certain stores in general. Okay? You walk in or out with anything that's going to set off an alarm. It's for the nature of knowing that either somebody's stealing something or something's wrong, whatever. So my you problem is, children, this is our future. The concern is going to be one where we, we're going to say the word safety. I teach my children every day. You're not going to care. Even right now, if this whole garage set on fire, damn the, the podcast, we getting the hell on. It's about safety. Right. So the nature of my job is one where if I'm going to preach that to a child, then when they walk through the door, that level of safety should be just, I trust y'all. Y'all are my boys. Right. I don't expect yeah. there to be any kind of worry or concern when you're in my presence. However. Well, except TMW people. Right. You get beans. <laughs> Get them beans in it. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, it's the concern for me is this. If we're going to say the word safety, it needs to be across the board. And this is if you're now going to tell every every person that they have to do this, then the extremity needs to go to those other areas where why don't we have metal detectors? Why don't we have um don't they do that up north? I, as far as I know. I know a lot of stuff. Well, yeah. What I remember seeing on film, I don't know if that's true, but I've seen at certain schools, 
especially urban schools, mm -hmm. they yeah, would have they metal detectors at that. that yeah. Yeah. And with a PS and some long ass number, yeah. yeah. Right. But no, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the argument for me is going to be when are we going to start to put the same level of consciousness into what we do for <laughs> education and not try to just steamroll everybody with, all right, everybody got to go get a clear book back. I'm not saying that shouldn't be in place. I'm fine with that. But there's a, a lot of other things that would be preemptive that would make me feel better about walking. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I'm going to take off my comedy hat for a second. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But I'm going to interject two, two reasons why you guys as teachers, why y'all are going through that. Okay. Okay. First and foremost, I just want to get this off my chest before I get serious. That guy that's standing at the end of the hallway watching for his kid, mm -hmm. he done got kicked out of the house, and it's a new boyfriend there. That's the only way he can see his baby. Just know mm -hmm. that know. new that new boyfriend won't let him come ten feet to that house. That's why he in that hall. Okay. And he probably wearing that woman out, so he don't want to see it. Because the last thing you want to see is a happy woman getting meat now. When you come see your kid. You hear praise the Jesus. Yeah, like, bitch, why is you laughing 3 o'clock in the afternoon? You didn't laugh with me. All of a sudden, you got a funny bone 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's that nigga, ain't it? I bought you a ticket to comedy head. Oh. I'm sorry. No, I said, no, listen. I said, let me get that off my chest. Okay. He confirmed before. Him. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, let me get that off my chest. First, this, this situation leads back to two things. Right. The first thing. The inmates are running the asylum. Yep. That's the biggest, okay. and, I, I, I'm, and I hate to use it as that, but that's the best analogy but I can think that's of. That's what testing has, that's what that's, testing has suggested. Exactly. That, you know, the kids that failed at a certain grade level, those are the ones that are gonna enter, you know, our institutions, things like that. I get it. The inmates are but running the asylum. The side of it where, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna loop this in, is we've given so much of a, less of a filter. Yes. Meaning, I got the whole world in the palm of my hand. Well, well, it's not all the common sense yeah. that is out in the world, yep. this is the answer for most kids in terms yep. of, well, I, all I got to do is Google it. I ain't got, you da, understand da, da, da. these kids know what a clitoris is at the, in sixth grade? I didn't find oh, yeah. out till I was damn near junior in high school. Did you he understand? Do you, <laughs> you understand? I didn't even, I didn't no, know what that was. Well, no. I was a junior. And I was already bumping before junior. Yeah, I just didn't know what the hell was. In that thing early, I wasn't. <laughs> I might not have been doing it right, but I was doing it. It was before college. I can tell you that. It was before college. <laughs> I did not I have Gary right and right me me not to go go away. Away. That is the honest truth behind how much of a change there is. We had two fifth graders at my school. My school will remain nameless unless you know I worked there. Two fifth graders vaping over at Liberty Elementary. You can you can read that out later. Please. The kids was smashing. I believe. Yeah, yeah. You understand? But at an elementary age, that's disturbing to me because. I used to get annoyed. I, look, I was scared of the Gremlins. Like, I don't, remember too. HBO weekend? You yeah. had that free weekend. Oh, yeah, and yeah. My parents was like, all right, this is the first time you're going to stay home. Damn, I'm Gremlins. Do I was scared of E.T. Listen. E.T. E. scared the hell out of me. Stephen King. Home. Yeah. 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 The yeah. first one. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen King's I was trying to get out of home. I swear to God. We, we lost Clown. so much. Yeah. yeah. That we right lost there. so oh, that much of that. That was good. Innocence. And there's no real way to get it. It's going to be said about the comment that uh that Bert made, which was the inmates are running the asylum. That is very true. But we kind of set the precedence or the tone for what kids deem acceptable, what kids deem as worthy of their attention and their time. Whereas we don't set those kind of examples that are in place. The story I made that um uh, I think kind of struck a chord with everybody when uh, Bert was inside was like I said, my mom, if I if I can speak to her for a second. When she took me into a grocery store to teach me a lesson about keeping my penis, um, simply put, she said, don't go to school like that. I did anyway. I came home. She saw my pants were sagging, tried to hide it. So she took me to the grocery store. You know, let's, let's go buy some of your favorite cereals. Let's, let's, let's go. So getting to the store, when we got to the entrance of the, the Winn-Dixie and the doors opened, she pulled her pants to reveal her grandma panties and, you know, to have that saggy pants look so in terms of the nature of how i felt walking around the store she had a vice grip on my my wrist so it wasn't a matter of me breaking away and trying to run 
she wanted me to go through the embarrassment that she felt for telling me because there was a point in time when you could tell your kids yeah don't hey you don't do none of this while i'm out of the house whatever and you walked that line because you very much did not want to piss off your parents absolutely so in terms of that her reflection on me was well when i send you out in the world i need you to understand people gonna look at you and see me so if we can't marry each other then don't get mad when i walk around looking the way i told you not to look and we don't do that same thing for our children now we objectify it or we say oh well i'm gonna let such and such do this because we're so caught up on this individuality kick or we can't we can't try to mold our kids the way we used to because we're afraid to say what is or isn't okay well no let them be let i call out the way way right yeah i'm not saying that there shouldn't be some room for individuality but there has to come a point where you say look son i really need you to understand here's why i might want you to go in this direction mm -hmm. not to say that if you know who you are that that's who you shouldn't be not going there with that oh, no, more than know. if i have a son i'm i'm gonna hope that i can say certain things without him feeling like i'm trying to impress something on him that doesn't match who he is so mm -hmm. that's why i say for everything that's going to be said with the book back we're placing the wrong energy on the wrong thing we have to dial it back and look at the bigger picture. A book, I can see into a book, but I can open it back. Granted, I get the nature of being able to see it. They do it at stadiums, but you're putting a band-aid on a gaping wound if you don't say that. It's a fluff problem. It's a fluff answer it to is. the bigger problem. Absolutely. And that's that's what I want to bring to the light because at the end of the day, there should be things in place to say, here's what we're going to do. You know, here's down here, thing. but we do live in the state of Florida, and unfortunately, our head man, if you want to call him that, I oh, personally refer to him as the head idiot. Oh, but oh. And, you know, everybody's got their own personal views. I I don't agree with a lot of what he feels is appropriate, but a lot of what he's pushing is an agenda for him to look better. And I think right now he's learned that his agenda did not impress as many people as he thought. Oh, that man don't care. Let me tell you. Let me. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you about yeah, one thing. Got the Trump, that Trump feel And and you know what's crazy? Trump Trump would care more if the people stood up and said this ain't working. Yeah. I don't like Donald Trump for worth a damn, but Trump care what his people think. You do. Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis don't give a damn by nobody. Set up, set up. Bro, we was underwater for two weeks. Hello? You didn't even see Ron DeSantis get on TV and say we praying for y'all. He ain't come Yo, down here. He, he, he come down here. He he nothing. Well, you know what he did? Was fighting Disney. Yeah. Oh, Who goodness. fights Disney? Look, anybody to lose that battle too? Happiest place or who in the hell fights Minnie Donald and Goofy? Who? Like I said, he I'm gonna bring something to light to y'all and I'm gonna tell you what's in my bed. Disney just sued him. Yeah, Disney just do you know why Disney sued him? Disney sued him because he sent his own special counsel into them people's office to try to look through their files. They so, files. yeah, so Disney had an injunction that says if anybody pops in here and decides they want to do impromptu, whatever, whatever, your lawyers can sue, halt, and stop everything you trying to do. Yeah. And but, that's why they did that. But the thing is, is that they are suing him back in regards to the fact that they have that special district for uh, yeah. taxation. They are not the only company within the state of Florida that Absolutely. has that same ability. But he singled Disney out out of all these companies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he, he picked the biggest giant with the most bread to yeah. come after his behind so that they, the giant ain't got to step on them. They can just be like, I need uh, all y'all semi-titans over there to go handle this for me. Because that's what they did. So now they are suing him based on based not only on the fact that he's doing everything I can't say it's illegal, but if you view it from the outside, it's, it's, it's highly it's, not favorable. It's you can. Yeah. You can say it is what it is because we continue to call everything something that it's not. I don't care about what Trump cares about because he yeah. didn't care enough for us to oh, really no, consider the understand. nature of what he, he brought out country. Oh, yeah. We got to see the ugliness that existed all those years ago. Through the nature of him trying to manipulate things to say whatever it is that he was going to say i get it the man is a strong businessman he's a lot of different things in terms of what he can bring to, to the light can't even say strong well, no but i'm just saying in terms of what we saw yeah. before he 
into the presidency because there was a point in time you you're fired. You you were on board with a lot yeah. of the stuff that he did that sensationalized the reality television. Well, because it was comical, it was funny, it was right. TV, it, it was, was good TV, TV too. But he brought that same energy to a, a position. Because what we didn't, didn't realize, it, it wasn't an act and it wasn't a show. No, because, it really wasn't. Yeah. The way he and handled that's, it. And that's why I don't understand why there's so many people that are willing to still jump in with him. I'm not saying anything because I'm, I'm polit po politics are a, a, a rocky boat with me. But the side of it where leadership, forget the politic aspect, leadership speaks for the nature of what you're willing to get behind. And there was people that died on our behalf so that we have the little bit that we got. It ain't yeah. much. But at the end of the day, if you consider the nature of what people were willing to do, way different. And that's why I say we're not, we're not, we're not superimposing that on our kids. We have to. There was a yeah. point in time when my father got up on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday and we walked. This is what they did. It's the sense of, it, you don't have to go through it, but I'm gonna show you the route that they went. Exactly. So you understand the nature of what it means to give up something to say, this is this is worth you doing. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we're not beating that same drum for our kids, nor are we placing the true value on what it means for them to be okay to walk around looking like us. Oh yeah, That's absolutely. Why. I was walking through Walmart with my five-year-old son in tears after they did the Philil, uh, uh, the the video of um, uh, and his name is escaping. The little boy that got shot with the water the, gun. No, not him. George Floyd or Philando Castillo. Philando Castillo. Oh, Castillo. Okay. It's a shame that we got more than one. Right. Story. The fact that you have to think about yeah, it. Yeah, the fact that you have to it's think tough. about it. But it's I tough. remember being in the grocery store with my son going. One day I'm gonna have to have this conversation with him about how to how to do. Why is there a how to on how to talk to cops when you get pulled over? Yeah. Why is that something that we need to be concerned with? But that's something. Why that can't I just get stopped? Right. And that's the thing that people aren't gonna really place any emphasis on because, yeah, you can get worried and scared, but not the same way that I'm gonna get worried and scared because exactly. I know I might not make it out of this. Oh, yeah. Because no matter what I do, okay, put your hands on, you know, flat on the surface of the car, put your keys. Like, there were so many different things that I was told so that this way you don't scare the cop. You Why do I have to be worried about scaring the cop if I don't walk the straight line most of my life? And he got a good and you don't. Yeah. How, how, why do you have to be afraid? So, we, we can... Uh, we they're can still bringing it. guns to school and we're still finding ourselves in a situation where not only are the children are safe, but one day, one day, if you happen to go to work, Mark, mm -hmm. and you happen to hear somebody... Humming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear him humming, Mark. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. might think this is a joke. Wait till the comeback. Somebody's gonna get choked. <laughs> well, hell, cause I, 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 I'm gonna whoop somebody's ass. If you hear somebody, <laughs> you hear somebody humming like that. If you hear them humming, you better move. You better leave. You better run and hide. You better call somebody. And I'm not talking about Santa Claus. Yeah. You better let somebody know he about to whoop somebody's ass. Shout out oh, to that yeah. substitute that that whooped that that girl with no panties on. We we appreciate you. It not 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 for not wearing drawers, but the fact that you whooped that kid behind. She had it coming. How about the cell phone? That was the cell phone. Yeah, you don't run up on no substitute because it's a 50 50 chance she ain't got no draws. And I know that kid was traumatized more about the lady not having no draws and her getting her hair no. I know when she was on that ground, I know she was like, Is this a coochie on me? What is going on? Wait, you going to learn today? Once again, hey, you've been into the Brothers and Brown Liquor. We've been sipping and tripping and thinking and drinking and just having a good time reminiscing and, and talking about things that matter to us. Hopefully, there are things that matter to you as well. My name is Gary D. Wright. I'm here with the crew. My man, Burt Cornelius, Mr. Show, the, man, the magical Mr. TMW, and DJ Rob. Hope y'all enjoyed us. We will be back and black on the next go round. Stay drinking and thank you. Cheers to you. Alright. That was a good end of the